Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the uh, to the channel. This is the uh, the first vlog I've done. Um, we're just setting up to do some work in the shop right now. Uh, but first, I'm gonna go for a little hike with the dog. Hey guys, so we're just about back from our walk. We're gonna uh, get right into it. We're working on a uh, septic tank lid today. Uh, not the concrete lid below, but the um, more the decorative lid uh, on top. I'm over at my folks house and uh, basically it's a uh, plywood lid with a flagstone top because the tank cover is right in the driveway and the uh, patio out front's flag. Um, Unfortunately, you can imagine over the years that's flexed and cracked and all the stones broken up. So what I'm doing for them right now is I'm kind of making it like a old style barrel barn top. Instead, it should look a little bit nicer out front and hold up better to the weather. Hey guys, so we're back at the shop right now. I think I, uh, I definitely spoke a little too early yesterday when I said, uh, I said that it's uh, almost summer or almost starting to feel like summer. It's uh, definitely quite a bit colder today. Yesterday I got up to 24 uh, degrees Celsius, and today we're down at uh, five degrees right now, so quite the difference. Anyways, I'm at the shop. Uh, this is the drive shed behind me. I'm gonna get, uh, get some materials out, uh, some tools that I need, and get to work on this uh, septic tank lid. All right, we are all set up. Got the uh, tools out that we're gonna need, and I got this thing all set up on our sawhorses. So this is a three quarter inch pressure treated plywood top that I've cut to fit the uh, the access hole. It's about a four foot radius. And then what I've done is I've taken some maple hardwood and laminated, so glued, um, screwed and nailed this down to the plywood, flipped it over and put some weight on it overnight to uh, help the glue dry and help it all uh, dry level. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off all the excess and then we're gonna start to sand down the finish and uh, prepare it for our handles, some steel strapping to make it look more like a barrel top, and then a uh, exterior marine finish on the top to keep it, uh, keep it weatherproof. Alrighty, here it is. So this is the hardwood barrel top that I've been working on. It's really not a complicated project. Um, but uh, next thing up is I gotta sand off all of this interior finish. A little too orangey for the house. Uh, I'm gonna sand it down and I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna stain it dark or if I'm gonna do a, a burn finish. But uh, either way, I'm gonna be coating it in some exterior marine grade finish so that it's gonna be impervious to water because it is sitting on the... So I know you're probably thinking, this is gonna take forever with the palm sander. And uh, you'd be right. <laughs> but unfortunately for me, I left my belt sander up at the cottage last week working on a project up there. So this is all I have for now. So for you, I'll just do this in a time lapse so it goes. 
much quicker. <laughs> Way longer than I would have expected, but uh, I guess that's my fault for using a palm sander and not uh, not not going to get a belt sander or uh, pre-planning this stuff. So, all right, guys. So what I've done here now that it's all sanded off is I've traced out two pieces of steel. They're two inch by three eighths inch thick. Um, I've set I've evenly spaced them across the uh, the top. So what I'm going to do is um, set my circular saw to three eighths uh, after I've traced these out cut that, chisel out the remainder, and then um, drill holes in the steel and epoxy down the, uh, the steel itself. Um, that way I can put screws right through the hardwood into the plywood. It'll look like two um, steel bands on the barrel. Um, I think it'll be a really nice way to finish it off, but it also gives me the added benefit of uh, holding this thing all together really well between the epoxy and the screws. So hopefully it works out good. Hopefully that chisels out easy enough. All right, so now that we got this all cut, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hammer and chisel it out. Be careful to not damage the stuff that we're keeping, but the but basically what we're doing is just folding over the ends of all of our cuts. Um, it should come out pretty easily, and then we'll uh, clean it up anything with the saw and with the uh, sharper chisel after. There you go, just like that. Alrighty, so I ended up using a, uh, a router to finish up these cuts, um, but as you can see, the steel is now in, so I've marked it with the Sharpie on the other side. All I have to do is flip it over, cut my steel on a bit of an angle there to uh, fit the profile of the uh, barrel top, and then I'm going to mark out where I need to drill holes and uh, epoxy it down.
Alrighty. So it's just as easy as that and all the steel's cut. So I'm gonna fit it up, um, grind off the edges and kind of deburr it so it's not nothing too uh, sharp or dangerous. Then start marking it out and getting ready to drill holes. So I just did a uh, two coats of uh, flat black trim clad on the uh, steel. So that's drying, I'm gonna leave that uh, Leave that overnight. I'm gonna try and hit it again tonight before I go to bed, and then uh, hopefully in the morning, it's gonna spend the night in our uh, in the heated shop there. So hopefully in the morning that'll be ready to install. Right now, what I'm trying to do is trying to figure out how to uh, get a bit of a handle system on here, something that's not gonna be uh, yeah, easy to trip over, but at the same time something that's not recessed in a way that um, that's gonna hold water. So I think what I've come up with right now is basically a large carriage bolt that's gonna go through, it's gonna sit flush, so it's gonna look like an actual bolt going through, but it's just loose on the bottom with a big washer um, hanging, say, six inches down, and uh, two nuts um, locked tied together. Uh, that way all you have to do is pull up the carriage bolt and then you'd lift it right up and it'll act like a kind of like a plunger handle system to be able to, uh, to lift the lid up. So all you gotta do is basically get under the edge of the lid and then it's just a big barrel top to, to throw over. Um, otherwise, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to figure out what kind of stain I wanna use on this to uh, darken the wood up. I haven't decided just yet. Um, we'll figure out the stain, get that on there, and then uh, tomorrow we can install, uh, install the steel, bolt that down, epoxy it in, and then uh, hopefully clear coat it all and be done. And then uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Hey guys, good morning. It is day two of the septic tank lid build. I know it doesn't sound like a project that should take two days, but um, with all the different paints and glues and stains and stuff, it's definitely uh, definitely gonna take full two days to get this done properly. Anyways, I'm just going for my morning walk with the dog first before we get into it. So we're back in the shop right now and the table is just about getting there. We, uh, we water sealed the bottom, which is just a three quarter inch pressure treated plywood. We uh, did two coats of water sealant on that. And then on the hardwood side, what we used was a uh, mini wax exterior wood finish. Um, I think it's the special walnut 224, so a darker walnut. We did three coats of that, it's all dry now, and the steel is ready to install. The steel we used, um, ground it down, clean it off of any uh, grease and dirt. Um, primed it and then painted it with three, clo three coats of black trim clad. Um, we're gonna install the steel using PL three times, which I've got in this tube right here. We're gonna PL it down, let that harden up, and then we're gonna um, go over the entire thing with a uh, urethane uh, floor coating. It's a marine grade coating. Um, exterior, it's extremely heavy duty. I've got it in the can right here. This is really intense stuff, but it's gonna be pretty much the only product that I could find that's gonna be able to hold up to having this in kind of a uh, wet environment under people's feet, um, in the cold, in the snow, covered in salt. Uh, it seems to be the only way to go to have this seal up properly. So we're gonna install the steel right now, let that dry up, and then hopefully later today we'll be able to put our first coat of the uh, exterior sealant on.
now that the steel is installed, I'm gonna get some clamps, clamp this down and let it sit for a few hours. Um, it is the PL fast dry, so I believe it has a dry time of only an hour. Um, working time I think is only 20 minutes, so I gotta get something on this real quick. Uh, we're gonna let it sit probably for uh, probably for the rest of the day, and then this evening I'm gonna hit it with its first coat of the uh, the of the armor seal here. Um, the reason I wanted to do the armor seal after is because I equally want to protect the seal, the steel as I do the uh, as I do the uh, the wood. Um, underneath the steel, it does have two coats of the mini wax, and then the steel itself is coated and then sealed in there with the PL. Now um, this way when I seal it with the armor seal over top of everything, all the little cracks in between the, st the steel and the wood, those will get filled with this. You can, you can use this stuff to fill up to almost a quarter inch gap um, and it'll dry really hard so that way um, no water's gonna be able to sneak in anywhere and uh, start to slowly rot this out over time. I think this is gonna be our best option to get the longest life out of this, uh, this septic tank top. All right guys, we are finally nearing completion of this project and I'm just gearing up to put on this armor seal uh, Rex Thane coating. Uh, we're gonna be doing our first coat right now. Hopefully by the end of the day I can get a second on, but I'm betting it's gonna be tomorrow morning um, and we'll let it sit for the day as well before we do an install. Um, couple quick tips with this stuff. This is the real deal. This is very heavy duty, extremely fumy and toxic stuff. You are going to want to wear gloves and you are going to want to wear a respirator. I just put new, uh, new refills, um, particulate filters and cartridges into my respirator here. And I'm just about to start mixing this up and getting ready to do the first coat. So that completes the first coat of our uh, sealant. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get the second coat on first thing tomorrow morning and then give that the full day to dry before we do uh, the install of our hardware and get the uh, tank top on. This project definitely took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but it's definitely worth doing these things right, especially when it comes to waterproofing for an exterior product like this. Uh, we don't want to rush the uh, stains and glues drying. Uh, three days might have even been pushing it as it is. Um, a lot of the time you, you need a full uh, 24 hours between coats and to have things properly dry. Now nothing here will be cured in, uh, in 24 hours or even 36 hours. A lot of this stuff takes a full 30 days to be cured. So I'm definitely going to avoid, uh, avoid walking on it or anything like that, kind of keep traffic off of it. And um, fortunately things are above zero now so we're not, uh, not at risk of things going to freezing at night and uh, hopefully we can avoid, uh, avoid any rain or snow or anything like that. So as long as it stays warm and we stay off it, it should be fine. So we'll check in tomorrow morning and uh, see how the first coat turned out. Alrighty, so it's been a few days since we spoke last, um, but the uh, barrel top, the septic lid, it is finally all dry, uh, hardened up and, uh, and installed. I put it on the first thing this morning. It's been, um, I think it's been four days since we last spoke. I really wanted it to have some time to uh, properly harden up. Um, that stuff was a lot slower drying than I had expected. 
Um, so it doesn't hurt to give it the extra few days if it's gonna make sure it lasts a lot longer. So without further ado, here it is. So what we used to have there previously was a piece of plywood with a uh, flagstone uh, laminated to it, but over time it flexed and cracked and uh, it looked pretty terrible. So we decided to go a bit of a different route this time, seeing as it is right out front of the house, why not have something that's a bit more uh, kind of unique, something a little bit different. So this is a uh, maple hardwood with three steel laminated all on a sheet of pressure treated ply with a marine grade finish uh, and stained in uh, kind of a medium walnut. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Sits perfectly level. Hopefully it's not too slippery uh, when it rains. We'll find out if it is. I'll uh, pull it out and give it one more coat with a little bit of uh, sandblast sand in there, some really fine stuff, just to add a bit of texture and grit so it's not slippery. But I think it turned out well. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, maybe give it a thumbs up and uh, think about hitting that subscribe button. If you have any questions about how I build this, please let me know in the comments below and I'll uh, see what I can do. Thanks guys.